Mr. Mr. Chairman, the next one is also a conditional use permit request. Um, this is by Hard Industrial Network. Um, you may recognize this property from a few months ago when there was a rezoning request for you to rezone a portion of the property um, from RP to CC. That was an effort to get all of the property under CC zoning. That was approved by the City Council. And as stated during the rezoning request, the purpose of that primarily was to make the property eligible for a dog kennel and doggy daycare type of operation that would require conditional use. So they're now here for part two of their process. Um, zoning pattern in your packet and on the screen shows the CC zoning that is there. Remember, this is a very large, deep piece of property. It's almost six acres, more than 1,200 feet deep. Um, it still has the RP zoning on many of the properties to the north and south, and all that really does for the site plan is it requires buffer yards between the commercial zoning and RP. But then the front of the property, along Bemis, you see the pattern is all <coughs> along Bemis Road. Character Area Community Activity Center, which allows these zoning districts throughout. Um, aerial imagery, you see the property is mostly forested. Um, all that is existing is what was there before, which is an older residence facing Bemis Road that quite honestly you don't know is there unless you slow down and look, or in the case of staff, slow down and stop to post a public hearing sign. You just do not see it from Bemis Road because there's so much else um, that's around it. Um, side plan in your packet, um, this was not part of the rezoning request, but certainly needed for conditional use. It's a little bit hard to zoom in on the scale, but it indicates how deep the property is. But it shows the existing residence up near the front. We would keep the driveway, of course, do some improvements there for commercial use. Your plan is to convert that existing residence to an office for the business to keep the building and use it for office use, and then do a private driveway for two-way traffic that meanders back to the rear portion area. You see a new building that's proposed that is still more than 200 feet away from the residential properties to the east. And then between the new building and the existing, you see a fenced-in area that would be the outdoor play area for the animals. Um, that would be a few acres even just for that. Uh, the detention pond is an existing pond that's already there. We plan to use that for their stormwater management. And on the site plan, you also see boundary yards. In your packet are some copies of the supplemental regulations for dog kennel operations um, and also the supplemental for an accessory um, outdoor kennel operation if this were a veterinary clinic, which this is not, but I included those in your packet for comparison. <coughs> um, they meet all of those requirements except for one, which is the distance of the outdoor play area to a property line. Um, the property is too narrow in configuration to meet all of that. They are currently going through another public hearing process simultaneously through the Zoning Board of Appeals seeking variance approval from that particular requirement. So that described a little bit further there in your packet. And here's the proposed site plan. Um, some photos. This is a combination of photos from the rezoning case and more recently. This is the view in front of the subject property looking northward up Bemis Road. This is the existing house. It's near the front of the property. Um, Adjacent, this is the Morningside Baptist Church that is diagonally to the south, sort of a view southward down Bemis Road. The Connell Road intersection, that's the di diagonally across the street. An interesting neighbor on the property immediately to the north is the Zelly City Animal Hospital, which does have an accessory dog kennel in its rear yard. Um, that also went through a variance review case several years ago. But interestingly, that is one of their neighbors. Um, here's a better view of the Animal Hospital. Another neighbor that's a little further away is an existing multifamily complex on the next property going north um, that is oriented more toward the front near Venus. Um, however, the backyards do touch each other. Um, property to the south is um, zone commercial in the front, RP in the back. Um, also a large piece of property like the applicants. Um, this is owned by Mr. Gunn and it has never been developed. And it goes way, way back just like the central property. And all you're seeing here is the first couple hundred feet. There's still another thousand feet of forest back there. Um, so again, the aerial image shows the dominant pattern of this property and nearby, which is trees. Um, and with this, you know, adding on to some of the discussion from the rezoning case, staff is finding the conditional use part of this request to 
consistent with the comprehensive plan, consistent with the conditional use review criteria, and we're uh, recommending approval subject to two conditions. First one is approval should be granted for a household animal boarding and pet daycare facility with no more than 50 animals on site at any one time and developed in general accordance with the submitted site plan. Number two, conditional use approval shall expire two years from the date of approval if no building permit has been issued for the new proposed building by that date. I'm glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Matt. Commissioners, any questions for staff on this one? I got a quick one, Mr. Chair. I'm just curious, Matt. I know you got this in this fine print someplace, but with six acres and 1,200 feet deep, did we just pull 50 animals? Out of the hand of that They're requesting about 30 is what they estimate. There you go. So I round it up. You done good. Um, and if they go beyond that, it requires a re-review and they'll have an established a track record. Matt, during the work session, did you, I don't know if they have to describe it or not, the size of the building they're planning to put up? It's about 10,000 square feet. It's hard to read the print on there, but it's a good size building. Um, there's no elevation drawings of that in your packet. Staff do not require them. Giving the remote location of the building and its lack of visibility from the surroundings, but it would still have to meet the city standard development regs for the building. It's commercial zoning, which means it cannot be an industrial looking building. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Uh, in the report, it states that less than 50 foot from the commercial side property lines, but on the drawing it shows that it's over the 100 foot minimum. It shows 114 foot on either side of the building. Sounds like I missed a digit in there somewhere. Which one? Because it says the minimum required distance between buildings and property lines is 100 feet. And it looks like from the drawing that she meets those on all four sides. That is for um, for the structures. It's number three that they're seeking a variance from. If you're looking at page four of the staff report, it's 218-13 double M number three. It says all areas maintaining animals outside shall be completely enclosed by walls or fences at least six feet high, which they comply with and shall be located no closer than 200 feet from property lines or street riding. It's the outdoor area. It's the outdoor area that they're getting the variance from. The building more than meets it. It's the outdoor play area. Any other questions? Unfortunately, they have the six acres, so they have plenty of room. Any other questions for staff? No, sir. Then we will open the public hearing portion of this case. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? <coughs> anyone that would like to speak in favor of this case? No dog owners? Okay. Is there anyone that would like to speak against this case? Anyone who would like to speak against this case? And that will close the public hearing portion of this case. Commissioners, any further questions or comments? And I will call for a motion. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Watts. For this case, CU 2024-02, I would like to make a motion that we recommend approval. Second. Okay. With conditions? With two conditions, of course. Yes. yes. Okay, we have a motion for recommendation of approval from Commissioner Wiles and a second by Commissioner Webb. All those in favor? I think it's going to be 